It has come to my attention that there is a man out there who has challenged YouTube to help him discern if I am my father's servant or not. He made some very good points. He said that if I am the Creator's witness and you ignore it, then you would be challenging the Creator himself. I agree totally. He also said that if you believe that I am the witness, then you should be listening to me and telling everybody on the planet about me. I agree totally. Therefore, he said, you have to make a determination because if I am not who I claim to be, then you must expose me to the world as being false. I agree totally. Then he said, and he goes on to add, but if I am who I say that I am, then you have to expose me to the world as a true prophet of our Creator. He is correct. But he also said that if you or all of you need to determine a criteria or a litmus test to determine if I am or if others who make such a claim are. This is not accurate. Our Creator already gave you the criteria. You need to obey His criteria. He will tell you who is false and who is real if you are obeying His criteria and letting His, refer his word define His truth. All you need to do is believe him and act on that belief by doing what he has told you. One person told me that if he wants to show me something, that he will. This is not true by itself. We have to be walking with him in agreement with him in order to be instructed by him. I like this man's challenge because he is weighing in on the importance of what is at hand. I just don't agree with his strategy and I will explain why. As a matter of fact, my father has been sending forth the same challenge through me. He has been crying out to you to either disprove me using his criteria or, or jump from your sinking ship and follow him. For about eight months now, nearly everyone has ignored what my father is restoring. The man making this challenge has stepped up to the plate and has hearkened to some of the instructions that have been given. This is good, but he is right. If I am who I claim to be, then hearkening to what is being given must become a primary focus, and each of you must make some very serious decisions because we do not have much time left to join in in sounding the trumpets. So each of you must indeed decide and decide quickly. But trying to decide from determining a logical basis from a group census is a dangerous strategy. I say this even if your decision is from a consensus that is based on different interpretations of scripture if those interpretations are uninspired or from uninspired men. You have to be careful. I'm going to discuss this most important subject today because many will be led astray by the multitude of counselors approach in the coming weeks and months. Actually, to say that they will be led astray is not the correct wording because they are already led astray. Satan has already deceived the world. A better way to say it would be that many will be deterred from coming to the truth by a multitude of counselors. The litmus test of who his prophets are was given to us by our Creator. All we need to do is follow it. You need to let my Father weigh in on what the litmus test is that he that he gave us. I will start by asking you to consider the biggest example of a group consensus denying one of his servants. Why did they deny his son when he came? It was certainly a, 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 a multitude of counselors. It was because they listened to the multitude of counselors who did not have his spirit and they did not believe his word. I will discuss the verses in Proverbs about the multitude of counselors in a bit. First, I want to establish why they rejected Yeshua because most have rejected his father's other prophets as well for the same reasons. And I have been rejected by most of you already for the same reasons as well. The truth just does not fit into what you want it to be. You want to define your own truth. Make your own religion out of it. In John 8 verse 45, Yeshua says, Because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of Elohim hears Elohim's words. You therefore do not hear them because you are not of Elohim.
must have fueled them up pretty good. So you have to determine if I speak the truth or not, obviously, is the answer. What any of you or I believe to be true does not matter. Believing something to be true does not make it true. Me saying that it is true does not make it true, just as you saying that it is true does not make it true, or thinking that it's true. That's not what makes something true. But our Creator and His Son saying that it is true does make it true. Our preconceived ideas block us from being able to see the truth and from being able to see the obvious. Yeshua told us that the truth is His Father's Logos. It's very clear, very simple. Cannot be argued, can't be explained away. This is what He says. John says to test the spirits. Every spirit that confesses that Yeshua is coming in the flesh is of Elohim. The word confesses is translated from the Greek word homologio, which means to be in agreement with or at one with the same logos. The religious of the day that Yeshua was speaking to in these verses had the scriptures, but they did not truly believe them. If they had, they would have known that Yeshua was their Messiah. So just having the truth in your book and reading it doesn't make it it's your understanding of it that makes it true. And it's the only way that it's true is if it's in agreement with what your Creator meant for it to be, what He says. Yeshua told them elsewhere that His Father's logos had no place in them. If any of you want to judge me as true or false, you had better understand the measuring rod because it was some pretty religious people who were keeping the commandments on a physical plane that were the ones who condemned Yeshua when He came and killed Him. And the prophets of old were condemned for the same reasons. Do you want to follow suit with your ancestry? Yeshua spoke the same warning to them. He told them that their ancestors stoned the prophets. It did not matter. They killed him anyway. Just as I'm telling you that your ancestors killed him, you will still kill me. I have read the book. I know the end result. You will seek to kill me just as your ancestors did, Yeshua and, and the other prophets. And in less than a year, you will be allowed to do so. But I also know that some of you will turn from your ways. It is already beginning to happen. So I will continue to cry aloud and spare not and hope that some of you will join in with me in crying aloud, and sounding the trumpets. For those of you who will not, your life will be short-lived anyway because you do not love the truth. Can a multitude of counselors tell you what his logos is? No, they cannot. He has already told you through his son and through me what the measuring rod is that all will be measured by. You can't refute this. I've talked about it several times. It is his logos. So how can you know what his logos is so that you can determine if I am true or false? I have spoken about this over and over again in these videos as well. There is only one way, and this is through possessing his seven spirits that separate us from all that defiles us. So it just so happens that we read in Isaiah 11 too that one of his seven spirits is the spirit of counsel. There's where your counsel is. Do you need the counsel of many if you have his spirit of counsel? Especially when coupled with his spirits of understanding and wisdom. Listen to what he is saying in the book of Proverbs in, in chapter 1. He explains that it is all about receiving his spirit and his counsel. But they would not. Verse 23, turn at my reproof. Behold, I have poured out my spirit to you. I have made known my words to you. Can you remember that as I go forward here? Because I have called, but you have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no one has hearkened. You have dismissed all of my counsel. Pay attention here, because many of you are dismissing his counsel today and looking toward the counsel of multitudes or religious gurus that have degrees in theology and stuff. Insanity. Your Creator wants to tell you what's true and He wants to give you His counsel. And He says, and He goes on, and you would not consent to my reproof. He goes on to say that He will laugh at your calamity for dismissing His counsels and mock you when your fear comes. He says that you will call upon Him and He will not hear, and that you, you will seek Him and you will not find Him. And He adds more to why, jumping down to verse 29, in lieu of that, they Hated knowledge that it, <clears throat> excuse me, that it did not, and, and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. They would not consent to my counsel. Excuse me, one second, a drink of water here. 
They would not consent to my counsel. <clears throat> Still got a frog. They scorned all of my reproof. They eat of the fruit of their own path and are filled with their own devices. I hope that you're hearing this. He is saying that they decided right from wrong for themselves, the same as the original sin of Adam and Eve. Talks about that in Genesis 3. Look, man has decided that, you know, that, he, that he can decide. Their counsel is not his words. Yes, that's right, his words. I'm going back to verse 23, as I said, he, he says that he was given us his words and made his spirit available to Israel to define his words, but they would not hearken. His spirit is given to us if we walk in agreement with his words, and then it teaches us the spiritual intent of them. There are over two billion in Christianity that all think that they have his spirit. Is this who you will receive your counsel from? More of them are even coming out of Christianity and turning to his Torah on a physical plane, but are still practicing rebellion to him. Is this who you will receive your counsel from, from rebellious spirits? I will guarantee you on his authority that if they are not hearkening to his logos and letting it become their nature or their logos, they do not have his seven spirits. You can have whatever spiritual feeling that you want to have because the demons are busy. And there's a seat for everybody to sit in. One thing that should be obvious to any of you, thinking that you have his spirit and having and having a spiritual feeling, one thing should be obvious to you is, is having, if you say you have a spirit and having a spiritual feeling does not make it true, does not make it his spirit. Very well could be Satan's spirit. Just look at all of the false religions that think they, they are spirit-filled, yet do not even keep his commandments to prove this. Yeshua taught clearly that receiving his Father's Spirit is conditional on keeping the commandments. Yet they're clapping their hands and everything else and say they have his Spirit. And believe me, there's many of you that are keeping the commandments on a physical plane that don't have his Spirit as well. You're probably being called by it to get to that point to some degree, but are you still living in rebellion? Are you still eating the bread of men? We'll get to that here in a minute too, but you know, people covering their heads, but they're still eating the bread of men. I'm seeking the counsel of a multitude is eating the bread of men, no matter how you look at it. And that's rebellion, same as witchcraft. Going on in verse 32, that the apostasy of the simple will be destroyed and the security of fools will perish. But whoso hearkens to me shall dwell in safety and will rest from the fear of calamity. It is very important to not trust the translations of men. The men who translated the scriptures had a bend to fit them into. They translated things to fit into their preconceived beliefs. In some verses, they do a pretty good job, but until they, it, it, at least until they challenge what they believe, and then they translate things to fit into their human reasoning, to into their beliefs. A good example of this is saying that there is safety in the counsel of many. This statement is anti-truth and it is contrary to my father. It's contrary to my father's will for, for where we're to receive our counsel from. My father is not interested in what many have to say. Of course, we ought to listen to his prophets. And he is their source. The story of Rehoboam is a good example of how listening to the counsel of men do, who do not have the, the truth is bad. Israel was divided and the results that followed were the ten tribes were scattered and remain scattered to this day. I guarantee you that those men that Rehoboam sought counsel from thought that they had the truth. They were wise in their own understanding. He ignored the counsel of the sages. Proverbs 11, 24 and 24, 6 is where people get the instruction to listen to the counsel of the multitudes. The King James records these verses to say in Proverbs 11, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. And in Proverbs chapter 24, for by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. So it's the same um, thing repeated, and we'll get to that here in a second too in the translations. One thing that you must know, scripture does not contradict itself. So if Yahweh is saying that we must seek his counsel for all things, then we can know that these verses are not saying that what they appear to be saying. 
We cannot automatically trust the translations of man. I keep saying that over and over again in these videos. We have to have his spirit to guide us, and of course, to guide us into looking it up to verify it. Proverbs, um, I mean, the concordances are available. People can look these words up. It takes some work, but surely, if you fear your eternal your salvation, you'll certainly fear enough to put some effort into it. I get quoted verses all the time for people hammering back at me that I was wrong about this or wrong about that. They need to take some minute, you know, a few minutes to look up the, the verses before making a fool out of themselves, because that's all it does is just proves their folly by showing that they, they really have no fear. Talking back to his prophet without even taking the time to see what they're speaking about. Proverbs 11, 14 reads uh, more like this. The people fall when there does not exist guidance or a plan. There is abundance. There is abundant deliverance in counsel. Or you could say there is deliverance and abundant counsel. Either would be true. Counsel is a verb according to the Hebrew gr grammatical notations in, in this verse and in the next in Proverbs 24 as well. It is not a noun as in a multitude of counselors. In the chapter before this, in chapter 10, verse 19, I just looked up a few examples. Just use this one for one. Solomon uses the terminology of a multitude of words or abundant words. The word word in this verse has the Hebrew plural notation to show that it is plural with the, with the word multitude or, or abundant. It shows it's meaning more, more than one word. But in this verse in chapter 11 and in chapter 24, the word for counsel is translated by, as, or, or, as, or as counselors is translated by the King James, does not. It is singular and it has the cal participle active notation. It is used as a verb as in to counsel and not as a noun as in many counselors. In some verses it certainly can refer to a man as being a count or counsel, but even when it does, it must be a man who has Elohim as their source if we are to listen to them. An example of this is David had counsel from and, and it was from a man and that was led by Elohim, sent by Elohim. It is our Creator's path or his Torah that must guide our steps, and it is his spirit that must be our counsel. If so much, if, if so much will even listen to, if we so excuse me, if we so much will even listen to the counsel of another, we had better make sure that they are in agreement with the logos of Elohim, and that this agreement is coming forth in their flesh. In the challenge that went forth from this man, it was spoken that we must seek a logical basis for our determination. With man's logic, we would without a doubt seek the counsel of many. This is the logic that men would bring forth. But where would you find a multitude of counselors today in a world where few are chosen? Whose counsel would you listen to? The man that sent forth the challenge to help discern if I'm a true prophet of the Most High was wise to add that he is not interested in hearing what people think or what their opinions are. This is good. But what does he think that he will get from such a request and such a challenge? Just garbage and swill. That's all that will come out of it. A bunch of people wanting to, you know, I mean, I'm sure, who knows, maybe somebody will actually legitimately say that's all that will come out of it because maybe somebody is going to legitimately come forth and say, let's just use the litmus test that was given to us. That's what, of course, I hope that there will be people who respond to him that way. I'm not sure. Anyhow. It all goes back to knowing the measuring rod and measuring what I say against it. And in order to have the measuring rod, you must have his seven spirits. It's plain and simple. There's no other way. So in the beginning phases of your growth, you have to believe the word and act on that belief by doing what it says. And you have to seek his counsel and the counsel from his known prophets and no other. Listen to the words of Moses. And what Moses tells us who the true servants are, and I'll get to that here too in a little bit, but anyhow, his, his litmus test is determined. You don't need to do a YouTube request. Turn to his word. Tells us the litmus test. When Elohim said in Ezekiel 24, 24, that when this sign comes, you can know that it is me that sent it, you, had, you have to believe him and act on that belief. And of course, I've talked about what this sign is in many of these videos recently, so I'm sure the people listening to this have 
have, I'm talking about the, the the head coverings and the and the um and the and the not covering your lips, the crying aloud, and and also the fact of what I could talk about not eating the bread of man and being ready by putting the shoes on your feet and such. This is a sign, he said. When this sign comes from somebody who would be um, escaped from the captivity or d delivered from the captivity, then you can know that it is he. So, he that sent it. Like I said, he is not interested in what people think. I said in other videos that he is showing that the test that he is putting in front of you today is that you must believe his word. He also sent forth other proofs as well. Believe him. He said that his two witnesses would turn the water into blood. Believe the sign when it comes, and it has happened. It has already came. It's impossible to refute. The other verse in Proverbs uses the similar wording as in Proverbs 11 and Proverbs 24, 6. It says, and through guidance or through a plan, you make your war. There is deliverance in much counsel, or there is much deliverance through counsel, however you want to do it. In this example, like the first, I do not know for sure where the much or the abundant belongs because in either place it works, it works, and it's true either way. But it's certainly not the way the King James has it translated. Who delivers us in war? Our Creator must be the counsel. He is the deliverer. We must seek His abundant counsel and seek to have His counsel in abundance. And there is much deliverance in doing so indeed. The point that I'm trying to make is your counsel had better not be coming from many counselors. This is opposite to what is true. It had better be coming from Elohim's seven spirits or someone who has them. And this all goes back to testing the spirits and knowing the measuring rod. Every spirit that is in agreement with the logos of Yeshua has, as evidenced by what they live in their flesh is of Elohim and every spirit that does not is the spirit of Antichrist or Anti-Messiah. His true servants are those who not only have the commandments of Elohim, but also have the same faith that Yeshua had in the flesh, and the same faith that he still has today in the spirit realm. He was his father's Logos in the flesh, and now he bears the name, the Logos of Elohim in the spirit. This is recorded in the book of Revelations. You can listen to these videos, if you can listen to these videos and say that I am in disagreement with him, then you have a different Messiah and you have rejected his counsel. His, father word, his father's word testifies to me just as it did to him. Yeshua said in Matthew 9, verse, verse 10, it starts off, and we'll sum it here, but when Yeshua heard that they were grumbling that the transgressors and the tax collectors were sitting with him and his disciples, he said to them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick do. Moreover, go and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, because I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I have spoken in previous segments what the Greek word that is translated as mercy in this verse means. It carries with it having a brokenness over our transgressions and over what the transgressions of men have caused. Spiral Zodiades Complete Word Study says that it means a special and immediate regard to the misery which is a consequence of sin. And we know that sin is transgression of the Torah, according to the Apostle John. The point that Yeshua is making is those who think that they are not led astray are not those whom he came to call. Those who are righteous in their own eyes do not need to repent because they are already good to go with their mind, in their minds. They think that they are already saved. They will not hearken to his prophets. Those that he was eating with saw their brokenness. They wanted healed. The self-righteous do not. The same applies to each of you today. If you think that you are already good to go with your Creator and you do not need to hearken to His servant, well, you are no different than the religious of that day. If you do not believe that His word testifies to me, then you do not believe His word because it is pretty straightforward. A Creator is not going to let an imposter come forward with His sign because He said that when it comes, you can know that it is Him. He is Almighty. The same goes with the turning the water into blood. It is impossible to not deny that he has held this back until now because it is so simple that anyone should have been able to see it, yet none could. 
in Matthew 11 verse 18 because John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a gluttonous man in a wine bibber a friend of the tax collectors and sinners but the work from his children is justified by wisdom another parable the reason that he did that he said this is because the work that he came to do testified that he was the Messiah the same is true of me don't believe me because I say that I'm his prophet look at the work that he has sent me to do to testify to the truth of the matter Yeshua reasoned with them then the same way back then he said in John chapter 10 you say of whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world you blaspheme because I said I am the son of Elohim you're sitting there saying you're you're saying that you're the son of Elohim, you're blaspheming. And he goes on, he says, If I don't do the works of my Father, then don't believe me. I say the same thing. Let's go back through all these videos from the beginning. Some of you have, and you're still struggling with this. I just, you obviously, you just, the Logos has no place in you, and you have to examine that. The works testify to it. He said, But if I do do the works, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. I say the same to you. What am I proclaiming anyway? Am I proclaiming the works that he has already had his servants record or not? If you can say I'm not, well, I don't, don't have, I don't have, there's not going to be much hope for you, I'm sure. Believe me for his works sakes, not because I say so. I do not bear witness to myself. My Father bears witness that he has sent me through his word the man just says he did bear witness of his son the man that issued this challenge said in my last phone call with him that since he came to the repairing the breach channel that he came to so much understanding he said that so many changes for the good increased in his life and of course he started obeying commandments he had to have and such that's not the point of this then it was like the next day he forgot all about this because he got angry at some rebuke. Others have written me and said that they are turning to the Torah because of what my father and his son are giving through me. They have written me and said that they are repenting from their transgressions and turning to their creator's Torah. Is this the mark of a false prophet? Of course the numbers, even though there's getting to be more and more and more, the numbers are still small because people are buried in their lies and that, of course, is actually more evidence that I'm his prophet, but you really think about it because the flock has been small. No, this is not a mark of a false prophet. Moses said that if anyone leads another away from the path that was given, that, that they are false and that they need to be stoned. Compare this to Saul of Tarsus, who had the opposite effect and turned billions away from the Torah over the last couple thousand years. If you cannot see the truth or the logos of Elohim being spoken through me, then you hate his logos and you have a different logos guiding you plain and simple your litmus test is your creator's word and the logos that his word defines if you cannot believe him you most certainly will not be able to see or believe whom he has sent same thing Yeshua was reasoning with them about back then this is why your ancestors killed him and this is why he will kill me history is being repeated Surely you would want to be on the right side of history correcting itself, but sadly most of you won't. Your Messiah has taken up his residence in me and he is my counsel. This is really who many of you seek to disprove once you once again. And you really think about it, if he's the one living in me and guiding me. And for the same reason that you people back then sought to disprove him then. Because he is not who you want him to be, just as they... He wasn't who they wanted him to be either. So they just make up their own Messiah. Of course, Christianity has their own perverted image of him. But um, back then, they just deny it and say he's coming for the first time. But anyway, this liar slighted themselves. I come not in my own authority. My Father's word backs me up, and his word testifies to me. And his logos testifies to me. I am crying out for you to jump from your sinking ship and let him throw you a lifeline. His line is his son's blood, but you have to turn to his ways in order to have it applied on your behalf. It is conditional on your repentance. Otherwise, as I referred to, in, to earlier in Proverbs, you will soon cry out to him and he will not hear you. He will mock you and laugh at you. 
In any case, the litmus test of who is false and who is true is not going to be determined by a multi multitude of counselors. I don't even remember quoting these verses actually ever because every time I thought about them, there's something just didn't jive. The spirit that's guiding me has shown me that they are a false concept that is based on the logical basis of men. Didn't even ever look them up till today. When I looked them up, of course, it proved it. Those of you quoting these verses in the mistranslations might ask yourself why the spirit that is guiding you did not bring this to your attention as the spirit that is guiding me did. Just maybe it's a different spirit. Obviously, I'm saying that sarcastically. Obviously, it's a different spirit. And you have to decide what you, you know, do you think that it's a multitude of counselors? Or do you think that Yahweh Elohim's seven spirits need to be your counsel, especially his spirit of wisdom and understanding and counsel, since that's the subject of counsel. Of course, the other seven spirits are, are equally important for, for, other, for other things, and they all tie in together to make us in his image. When I chose to leave the world for my Father's kingdom's sake, I told him that I do not care if I am the only one in the world who will do it his way, that I would set, set out to do so. No matter what anybody said or thought, I surely wasn't seeking the counsel of anybody else. And from that moment, he became my primary counsel, but for a while there, I still listened to the counsel of other men as, as well. And when I did, I remained in the captivity. It wasn't until I started refusing the counsel of the multitude that I came out of it, that he was able to deliver me out of the captivity. Now my source for all counsel is him and those in whom he has proven to me are his servants. I suggest that each of you do the same. If his word is not good enough for you to prove to you that I am his servant, prepare to receive a different type of reasoning with you from him. If you were hearkening to Yeshua's words and the words of the prophets, you would be hearkening to what I speak anyway because they are the same words. There is only one difference, and that is Yeshua is beginning to restore all things through me in order to prepare a people who will hearken to him. And he'll finish restoring all things when he returns here. Talked about that in different videos. These things were not restored or revealed until now because it was not time. The temple was finished despite the abomination of desolation, and now truth is being restored to a people to call them into the next phase of my father's building plans. If you think that true counsel can come from the logic and from the counsel of men who are rebelling to the truth, that is your choice to believe this. My Father has commanded you through me to stop eating the bread of men. Yet from what I see, this is not being hearkened to by very many. Some have even covered their heads and put on tassels, but they continue to eat the bread of men. Don't you think that that's what this is by seeking the counsel of many? I look at, I go to different sites from time to time and people subscribe to me and stuff and people that are asking me questions and all I see is filth mark with lies with their favorites and such and their uploads and stuff and it's just unbelievable. Anyway, do you think that your head covering will be real in his eyes if you pick and choose what to obey and you keep eating the, the bread of men? Each of your primary focus must be on obtaining his seven spirits, plain and simple. They will be your counsel, and his servant is instructing you how to receive them. Believe this for his work's sake. It was prophesied to happen as well. Measure his instructions that are being given through me, and he said that he would pour out his spirit on all flesh who would receive it. The whole process is a new covenant. Yeshua brought it to Israel, and they rejected it, all but a, the small flock. He did not explain this new covenant in plain language back then. He spoke it in parables. He spoke it in parables so that it could not be understood except by those who are being called to be the first fruits. It was available to all of Israel to, to become the first fruits and eat part of it and even to others who could be engrafted into Israel, but it was still hidden in parables and revealed to those who would hunger and thirst for his righteousness. But now his, the temple is complete and the key is being uncovered as my father purposes to build his latter harvest of his children. Lay siege to what he is offering you and